You can create raised bed gardens on your patio, lawn, or compacted poor garden soil with straw bale gardening. This gardening technique's been around for centuries, but thanks to Joel Karsten's book, Straw Bale Gardens, it's gained new popularity. Let me walk you through the process from start through harvest. Purchase straw bales made from alfalfa, wheat, oats, rye, or other cereal that have less weed seeds than hay. The amount of produce you want to grow will determine the number of bales needed. Place bales in their permanent location with the cut sides up and twine parallel to the ground. Once you start the conditioning process, they're very heavy and hard to move. I selected this neglected bed on the south side of my home. It's slated for a makeover in the next few years and seemed like the perfect spot for a straw bale garden. Lots of sun, near a water source, and next to the house where I can easily tend and harvest. I use cardboard and straw from old bales for mulch to discourage weeds in the surrounding area. Once the bales are in place, we're ready to start the conditioning process. This is done to start the inside of the straw bales composting so they'll support plant growth. It takes about 12 days, so plan accordingly. All you need is water and fertilizer and time each day to make this happen. There are many variations on conditioning, but we'll follow Joel's schedule. Day one, we'll spread fertilizer over the top of the bale. I use three cups of malorganite, an organic nitrogen fertilizer. The organic nitrogen feeds the microorganisms that decompose the straw into a nutrient-rich growing medium. Now moisten the bale using a hose end sprayer to help work the fertilizer into the bale and thoroughly moisten the straw. Day two, we water again. Rainwater or water allowed to warm prior to applying helps support microbial activity better than cold water. You'll only need a few gallons of water to keep the thoroughly moistened bale saturated. Day three, add another three cups of low nitrogen organic fertilizer and moisten the bale. Day four, water only. Day five, add three cups of fertilizer to each bale and water in. By day six, your bales may have the sweet aroma of compost and feel warm to the touch. The smell will soon dissipate, but the composting will continue. Day seven, eight, and nine, apply half the amount of fertilizer, one and a half cups of malorganite, and water each day. Day 10, add a complete fertilizer like 10-10-10 to provide needed phosphorus and potassium and water. Day 12, you're ready to plant. The inside of the bale should be the temperature of warm bath water or cooler. If it's hotter than this, wait for the bale to cool a bit before planting. Use a trowel to pry open a hole in the bale. Place the transplant in the hole and cover the roots with potting mix. Create a planting bed for seeds by covering the bale with a one to two inch thick layer of planting mix. Follow the planting directions on the back of the seed packet. Regular watering is critical for success with this method. Soaker hoses or drip irrigation make this an easier task. You can also use gallon milk jugs with holes in the bottom or inverted two liter soda bottles placed near the base of each plant to provide water where it's needed. Water seed beds often enough to keep the planting mix moist. Reduce frequency as the seedlings become established. Thoroughly water your plants whenever the area around the plant roots begins to dry. This is more often during hot, dry weather. Give your straw bale garden a nutrient boost about once a month or as needed throughout the growing season. With the help of Melorganite, you're on your way to growing a productive straw bale garden much like these. So consider giving it a try.